Because you say you really want to know your pastor. I wonder if he preaches much. He said, you will be amazed that I am too busy to hold meetings with everybody that's concerned. I have to counsel folk across the world. 14 churches preached in every state in America, out of the country. This is not something that you should actually have easy access to, but because of favor and grace and me learning how to pastor, I want my church to be one of the greatest churches in America. Will you clap for your church? It's been a long time since I've said this. 1403? 1403! Y'all sound like Bloods and Crips. I love you all today. From the bottom of my heart, I really do. I love you all today. Thank you, Berlin. I, I be, because I can feel it when certain people say it because they mean it. And love gives a man or a woman strength that they did not have. So look around and find somebody to share some love with and tell them I love you with the love of the Lord today. Dr. Barbara, I'll need your support on this sermon. Dr. Tracy, I always have your support. Uh, I need one or two of the young adults to push me today. At least one musician. At least one doorkeeper or usher. And at least two weed smokers. Look at that. We got you, Bishop. <laughs> in every section in this church, there's somebody who's something. Look at his neighbor and tell him, don't reveal your something. We're on a series simply called Faith. Now, we had a great Bible study this past week. Woohoo! Wonderful Bible study. And thank all of you that attended. Wonderful Bible study. The topic has been called Order My Steps. Thank you for my five people, Lord. I'm going to keep straight. The subtopic today is simply a faith that separates. Will you tell somebody and tell them there's a faith that separates? Genesis chapter 13 verses 8 through 14. And this is our only reading of the sermon. Father, touch me. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and your herdmen, because we're brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself. Oh, y'all missed it already. Genesis chapter 13. Am I in the right scriptures? All right. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go right. If thou wilt depart to the right hand, then I will go left. Look at somebody and tell them, get right or get left. If you don't get right, you will get left. Tell somebody else that so they understand where you are. If you don't get right, you will get left. Father, help me some more. 
Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, and it was very well, well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was a good place before the Lord destroyed it. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou cometh unto Zohar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan. Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. I can't get no help. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. If he actually did this, can I just stick a pin somewhere? If he actually did this, Abram for one screamer, then that means he also looked at what Lot took. What your enemy is getting a portion of, you are getting all of it. Can y'all catch that? How can uh, the wealth of the wicked be transferred to the righteous if God does not allow the wicked to prosper? Y'all, boy, this middle section, give me the two sides. Don't pray against your baby's daddy. Pray he make a lot of money. Don't pray against your haters because they must prosper to transfer. Look at somebody and tell them, speak well of all men. You got to speak well. Now that takes patience. That takes a certain level of discipline. To speak well of someone you don't like and not be lying. That takes a serious level of maturity. To say hello, not just out of being cordial, but because you're mature enough to speak in their presence. The right side has a little tension going on. I want you to focus on verse 14 one more time because from there is where my holler will be. The Lord said unto Abram after that lot was separated from him. Here where I'm going, Bishop Robinson, here where I'm going, saints of God. God did not start speaking to Abram until he separated from a lot. And some of y'all, why isn't God speaking to me? Because you have not separated from something he does not like. Middle section still got some tension there. Normally it's my left side, but they've been good today. They must have held the meeting. Did I read it right? I'm going to read it again because when I get there, y'all going to be glad I did. The Lord said unto Abraham after. There's a conversation God wants to have with all of us, but we've got the wrong company for him to hold that conversation. If I'm hanging out with a group of people and another person shows up that I know is not a part of what God is saying, I will cease that conversation. See, some of y'all made the mistake of continuing when you should have ceased. You don't say everything around your children. You don't say everything around guests. If I'm right, somebody talk to me. But this new world, this new society. Y'all are so bold that y'all are saying whatever you feel like saying. Whenever you feel like saying it. This is borderline demonic.
You see how some of you ain't clapping? It's just me. I say what's on my mind. No, you're supposed to say what's on your heart. If you're still speaking from your mind, you are not mature at all. Because the Bible says from the heart, the mouth speaks. As long as it's on your mind, you should keep your mouth shut. But once something filters from the mind to the heart, there needs to be a conversation. There are people that I love in this church, but let me get a little more personal, that I love in my family. Those who are allowed to walk in and out of my private spaces. And the hardest thing for me being a man of God and being a man for three folk who will talk is when God is telling me that you are not who you say you are. It becomes very difficult for me to hug and kiss you like I used to because I found out I was kissing a fraud. See, it's getting real quiet. And if you want to maintain that level of relationship for anybody learning, there must be a conversation. Let me go here, middle ceiling. And if the person you need to talk to refuses conversation, then there must be a separation. You follow? Y'all, before you get rid of or disconnect from anyone, if there's any level of love involved, the separation without the conversation makes it illegal. Now I need to say this about black Pentecostal apostolic tongue speaking people. Because y'all won't open your mouth now. We are poor at confrontation. Some of you won't say amen because you don't like when people check you. Even if they're wrong, you get the right to now prove that they're wrong. But some of you didn't grow up being able to speak. Your parents said, shut up while I'm talking. Everybody else said, you better not say nothing. Do as I say. But in this day and time, if you love someone and something is happening that you have no idea of why, one of you must approach to hold the difficult I'm going to say it for the last and where there is no conversation the only way to resolve and maintain your peace is separation Let me let me let me read my statement there comes a point in most people's lives where separation is a must I'm glad I only asked for Dr. Tracy I asked for Dr. Barbara but she writing right now the reasoning behind the separation see y'all think I don't know why I'm preaching this and why I'm calling names but y'all better hear me hear me The reasoning behind the separation needs to be closely observed and understood. Most of the time, separation translates that someone has been hurt or done wrong. And they feel the need to get away to maintain their sanity. But when a separation has been ordered by God, it's because the picture is much bigger than you. I'm going to read. I, I can't even rebuke them. The one that makes the move to separate first looks like the one that has the advantage. But the truth is, y'all gonna miss this, the one that moves last, never separated, 
they were left alone. Charles Curry, you missed that, so I'm going to repeat it for you. I'm going to repeat it. The one that makes the move to separate first looks like the one that has the advantage. If he's going to leave me, then I'm going to leave him first. Because you feel good making the first move. But the one who moves last actually didn't move at all. They were left alone. All right, they still didn't get it. They still didn't get it. They still didn't get it. The Af African study Bible, which most of us are from Africa, even white people, some of them are from Africa. I've been to Africa. There's a lot of white Africans. See, you don't know. Ain't no white. Yeah, there is. See, don't talk about where you've never been. Their commentary says this. Material blessings turn out to cause problems between people when only one is prospering. To the one that's frustrated, you are actually not upset with who's prospering. You disagree with who prospered them. All right, it's still quiet. It's quiet up here, too. In this case, Abram and Lot was prospering at the same time. They were both wealthy. African-American study Bible. They both had good, uh, they had a good amount of sheep, goats, cattle this developed strife not between the two but between their herdsmen whenever someone's talking about leaving you and you've done nothing to them there's some monkey in the middle that has done some conversation I want to talk about and the problem is, the one that's leaving was weak enough to listen. And the one that's strong said, let's hold the difficult conversation. I do want the young adults to teach me something. And I'm going to tell them what I need help with. And they can write it and not put their names to it. Because my group of people... The way they're going to say it, I've heard it a thousand times. So let me say this. How do y'all fall in love today and then in a month y'all hate each other over a disagreement or cheating or y'all quiet, abusive language, but, but for three years straight you was in love. Hmm. Am I boring y'all in the back here? Because some of y'all looking around, legs trembling and shaking. I'm gonna, the herdsmen started talking to each other. My master has more than your master. My pastor can preach better than your pastor. She sang the song better than the other person. I wish Berlin would play this and I wish Sam would play that. I wish Corey would not play and just let Berlin or Bruce play. Once these words get in the atmosphere, they look for weak minds. Oh yeah. They, I want to preach. They look for weak minds to nest in. And then you start nurturing those thoughts. And then those thoughts turn into actions and you start treating who you never treated bad. 
you start treating them real funny. Because now those words are controlling some of your actions. And for those who will talk in the middle, actions speak louder. I never said I didn't like you. Your actions said it. Now, I will psychologically say this to ten folk who will talk. Most best friends become worse enemies. I refuse to let whoever I will marry be my best friend. She will not be my best friend. She will be my best choice. Because you need a rational voice when both of you argue somebody that can speak sense to you oh y'all don't hear me even if they agree with who you're mad at you need an unbiased voice you don't give up best friends for let me get out of here let me come back i don't like your friends then we can't get married right now we got to talk we got to hold some difficult conversations Why you wait till after we get married to tell me they can't come over? Now, some of y'all are quiet because you don't want to learn this. You got to remember, some of us had friends before we had you. And these friends put up with us and help us become who we are. And you're receiving something that they help mold. Y'all don't want me to... And now you want me to leave them just for you? You don't even talk. You don't communicate. You don't crack good jokes. You, you, what, what's talking about? So I'm going to get rid of all communicators for a non-communicator? What caused tension? I need about 40 minutes. But what caused tension between these two who loved each other? I hope somebody catch it. It's called too much. Have you ever dealt with a person and be like, you are too much for me? Just too much. Let me talk to talkers. Or you carrying too much baggage. You need help. You need to confront whatever's been going on with you because I ain't the one to put up with what they did to you when you come to me it's me and you it's not me you and the world you know the future oh, let me get out the future don't want to keep talking about the past the future is a part of you that made a decision to move forward is a better communicator because the past has known you longer than the future oh yeah so the past always gets you to consider coming back let me tell you what god told lot and i hope you know, he says when you leave don't look back he said and if you look back y'all don't hear me you'll be penalized and lot's wife See, shouldn't been his best friend because you don't know when your boo-boo going to look back. You ain't got that much control over nobody. Every person married or unmarried is their own individual agent of change. All of us. Who you dated is not who you married. Who you married is not who you divorced. All right. Who you divorce, you can remarry because they change after y'all got a divorce. See, it's crazy. To every trial, there's another person. I thought I was helping somebody. Don't be texting me after. What did you mean by that? It's plain right here. So Abraham, this is the African study Bible. Abraham said to Lot, when you read it, let, not, let us not allow this conflict to come between us. 
because of what other people are saying. Then Abraham says to Lot, we are relatives. How did we let someone that does not actually know either one of us or care two cents about either one of us? Oh, Lord. You know, because neither one of us want to be the first to say goodbye. Y'all don't know that song? You should use it on your honeymoon. Neither one of us a good song. How do you let the words of a stranger mess up the relationship with the friend? The only way that occurs, I wish I had 10 people, is you were bored day one with the friend. Some of y'all look like y'all having personal flashback. This is in the Bible. This is not you. Your name is not Abram. But you are a lot. Can I get 10 folk to admit like I could that I could be a handful sometime? I'm... No, no, lift your hand way up. Yeah, way up. You could be a lot. And the people that has the most going on with them are anointed people. Because we feel like we give so much but get little back. Which what we don't know is that's the way it's supposed to go. If you're anointed, you're a giver, not a taker. Y'all, and when you run out of oil, God will refuel you again and say, now go back out there and do it again. Many are called, but few are chosen. You that are called always need a call. You follow? You that are chosen, you are picky at whose call you answer. I see some folk getting mad now. They looking around like, huh? get mad because you need to work on yourself right through here. Some of us can be a handful. Let's just, let's just hold this conversation. Some of us can be too handful. If I have any honest people who can evaluate yourself and be real with yourself, if you know you can be a handful or more, shout, yep, that's me, that's me. So if all of us can admit that, how do we ever get past this? Because folk who are a handful ain't going to apologize first. You ain't talking to me, Patty. Especially if we feel that we're right. I know I'm right. You can say what you want to say. That's not how you say you're right. If you love somebody, you ain't got to go through all the net motions and all of that foolishness. It's probably the first time you've ever been right. I think I'm boring some of you. Genesis 13 and 8 is where they held that difficult conversation. And it was Abram who said, so we can keep what's left of our relationship. Let's separate. Hmm. Now, I know you're not going to agree with this, but this will be for Wednesday. But I need 30 folk to jump if you're grown and you can handle this. To separate does not mean you have to leave. You can sleep in separate bedrooms and not leave the house. Now what I'm trying to tell 
But if you get so angry, you walk out of your own house, you leave the spirit of evil to build a scenario when all you got to do is one Negro go to the kitchen. The other one go to the bathroom. Y'all. But the devil's job is to make separation leaving. I'm going to talk to one person. Because once you leave, it tells the other party you never cared. I can't hear no men. You leave that house that easy. It makes it seem like you got somewhere to go. Come on. I got to preach the Bible. Because some of y'all talking about I leave and I don't go nowhere. If you left long, you lying. Now, let me tell you something. And you can shake your head all around here. You lying. When men leave and we stay gone for a long time. We on the phone with somebody that we don't want you to hear. We went to eat. We may not be having sex with anybody, but we are healing our wounds by hanging out with the relationship we should have never, ever had. And now when we come back, that woman who did not leave is able to pull up her radars and be like, so you look like you've been out somewhere. You all right today? Now he has to lie instead of hold the difficult conversation. I see women on the left and the right way in the back not saying amen because women cheat too. But I'm trying to help all you. Oh yeah, we got some cheat, cheating women in the back. I won't say where, but y'all cheaters though. That's why you can leave so quickly. Then I see couples dating and married looking at each other like that ain't me. I listen, I ain't trying to mess up your thing. But all that has to be done, Dr. Tracy, when a party in the relationship assumes that the other party is cheating, all that has to happen is a stranger lie and tell the party, I saw her or him. All they need is a confirmation even of a lie. See, y'all quite, and the weaker party will then take separation to leave it. The stronger party who was left alone, y'all, if I got three of you, talk to me. We are holding a conversation trying to protect our integrity when we know we should have left them a long time ago. But on your inside, you're like, you know what? I don't even know why I'm stopping them from leaving. I am subliminally fixing some marriages in a minute. Is that not the job of of the pastor? To help you navigate through difficult... You ought to just preach something else. Mind your business. You need to just leave and take your business out of here. Because the truth of the matter is, when you join a church, you're sitting there to find out that God does not just love you when you're right. He shows you love even when you're wrong. By taking you to the place of where you made the mistake. And he says, let's try this again. I feel my Noel Jones coming, but uh. Abram said to Lot, Lot didn't say to Abraham, one more. I told Dr. Wellington, I'm calling him that because of what he does for a living here today, not minister who he is in the spiritual world here. I told him in the office, I'm going to use some of my degree to help people. I knew they wouldn't like it because truth hurts folk. (laughs) but 10 of you catch this 
Normally, the one who says, let's separate, is saying that because they want to hear your response. And if you say, okay, now they're wounded because they were hoping you would fight. Oh, y'all are here for the relationship. The one that brings it up first is not the one that leaves. The one that brings it up is trying to spark the difficult conversation. And when they say, so you just want us to stop being married? Yeah, whatever. Now they're hurting secretly. Because they did not bring that up for separation. They brought that up hoping that a door would, y'all quiet in the back, that a door would open for us to find something common to fight for. Lord, Lord, they don't like what you're saying. He said, we're relatives. To remedy this particular situation and maintain peace, Abram and Lot have to go their separate ways. Now, there's a Swahili proverb, Swahili. Okay, it's Yusa Pasiba Yufa in Tajanga Yukata. I'm not going to say it again. What that means, what that means for ten folk is, if you do not fill up the cracks, you will build a wall. Boy, the folk in the middle give me a hard time today. And all of you that's ever been divorced or engaged and married and it didn't work, you should sit up straight and be listening. But capture this. What it says is, as soon as you see a problem, you should rectify it. Because if you don't, the cracks become a wall. And once a person puts a wall up, all right, let me... it's hard for you to start that over again. So you got to work at it when it's cracking. Look at somebody and tell them, you crack me up today. You crack me up today. What they're telling you is there's something you need to fix. You sibo siba, you fa, you tajinga, you kata. If you do not fill up the cracks, you will build a wall. Give me my 30 minutes. I've got two folk learning. When a wall or when a situation has cracks, that means it comes with natural separation. This is natural. You hurt me, I don't talk to you for two days. That's natural. I hurt you and we don't talk for 30 days. That ain't natural. We married and only have sex once every six months. That ain't natural. We argue and don't touch each other for a week. That might be natural. See, look at everybody. You count up how long you... You already know you ain't natural. You already know you ain't natural. You know you ain't natural. I got folk here ask me, can I get engaged to somebody? Can we get married? Heck no. You can't even live with yourself. You got to first fix the cracks in your own life. Oh, yeah. Because if not, she'll build a wall before you even build a marriage. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you cracking me up right now. You cracking me up. Relational cracks left unchecked 
can become cataclysmic. I'm going to talk and then I'm leaving. We must ask for God's wisdom sometime in making painful decisions. Especially while we're striving for peace. I think I want to pause here too. And I think I want to let y'all in on something. Then I'm done with this deep part because y'all done made me study too hard for y'all to make me look like I'm cracking all over the place. But let me say this to 30 folk who will push me. Men who work hard for their money, we work hard for that money. We're talking about healthy men to take care of responsibilities, our wives, our family, our children, if we are real men. Say amen. amen. Real men work hard because they want to provide. The problem that men will never admit because they don't see it because they've not gone to a therapist or psychologist or to somebody because everybody thinks the Holy Ghost says everything. Let me say this to 30 folk who will catch it. Real men provide for women who provide peace. If I'm paying all the bills in the house, my house ought to be peaceful. Or should I say full of peace? And none of you women would understand this, even you women who look stone-faced. You can get any man who's a real man to change if he's in an environment of peace. But where there's war. Oh yeah. All right, I'll get out of there too. I'll move out of there, I'll move out of there. We must ask God for wisdom sometime in making painful decisions while striving for peace quarreling that's arguing somebody shout quarreling is quite i'm going to my next level it's quite common in churches and families especially churches and families who don't want to face burning issues head on This middle section ain't been clapping at all. And about five of y'all I know personally, and I know what you're going through, and you sitting there like Humpty Dumpty, are you crazy? About three over here to the right. I know a few of these, but these my young adults. I ain't bothering my young adults. But, but these two sections too grown to be so quiet. Because how you handle it is going to reflect on how they deal with it. There's a difference when you say, listen, I don't want to talk today just for five people because I need a day to sleep on it. But let me say this for ten folk who jump and scream. Sleeping on it is different than sleeping with it. Now I need to tell you about this. Bring those men up. Those are my bishops and friends. Let them sit over there. You, 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 you. Some of you have separated from who hurt you, but now you're sleeping with the pain. You don't get it because you're slow. So I'm never talking to the person but I'm going to keep laying down with the pain. If you're going to nurse the pain, you might as well keep the person. See, I ain't got, I got grown men, but ain't nobody standing up. If every day you wake up and that person is still in your spirit or your heart, then that means God's giving you time to hold a difficult conversation. And if you don't hold it soon, uh, conversation then becomes. And now by the time you want to talk, the cracks. Y'all are learning. Listen to you. Now you're learning. Now you're learning. 
You're learning. We almost there. You learn. Uh, look at your neighbor. Hopefully it's not just your wife or friends, but tell them you're cracking me up right now. You're cracking me up. Good to see you, Bishop Woodson. I'll be right with you. Quarreling is common among churches and families because we don't want to face things head on. Let me go to my next level. Dealing with life issues is a necessary undertaking for healing to take place and for peace to be found. I want you to tell two or three people and wake them up and tell them you got to deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. I'm, I'm not going to look at my friends. I find somebody else. Deal with it. I've done some deep research, Deacon Mays. And I'm going to give three examples and I'm going to fly this kite. But let me start here. I want to first give you a few reasons why friendships separate. Y'all don't want that either? Because how y'all go from friendship to please, please don't mention their name. Ah, I can't say. Ah, how, how do we go from? How do we go from desiring a person to being disgusted by the person we desire? They go to the middle again, boy. The middle section ain't moving. And I keep telling the women, and I'm trying to help you, that certain women in here that are very beautiful look very ugly when you don't know how to respond. Get mad with me. You look disgusting. When you don't entertain the truth for what it is. The truth job is to make you free. Not set you free. Make you free. Here goes reasons why people separate as friends. Some good reasons. And I'm going to see if 10 folk catch any of them. One is life stage changes what do i mean people grow and mature and sometimes one stays naive we grow in separate directions one wants to stay unemployed the other wants to go to college y'all ain't talking to me the one says why you want to do college now i'm not gonna see you why are you going out of town because that's the one that paid a full ride Y'all still quiet. And if we best friends and we went to school together, junior high school and high school, why don't you go to college along with me and let's pursue our education? Because one wants to freestyle, y'all don't hear me, and one wants to style for free. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you don't create a life for yourself, life will create a life that you don't want to see. Lord, I think we wasted this. Another reason why friends separate geographic distance. Another reason, differing in values and goals. Come on, talk if, if you've been there. So far, none of the things I have mentioned is a demon. They're all reasons. You want to stay in the hood and I want to live in the suburbs. You want to keep taking public transportation and I want transportation of my own. I still can't get help. You like married men. I want a man of my own. I'm tired of messing with other people's men. I want to preach, but they won't let me though. We have outgrown each other because our morals are no longer the same. Well, married men treat you better. Even though they married, they don't give you no problem. See? 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 Hey, Bishop Pass, see? But the first 10 that jump on this, I know there's hope for you. Whenever God is leading you by faith, there must be challenges. Where there's no challenge, there's no change. And I'm going to help some of y'all now. Every time God is telling you to come up higher, he'll let something confront you that makes you want to look back instead of forward. Now you have to muster up enough strength. 
to say the just shall live. When things are easy to get, they're also as easy to lose. There has to be a little fight in faith. There has to be, come on, push me. There has to be a little uh, challenge before there's a change. Another reason why friendships break up, lack of effort. Only one person is given. There's no reciprocation. Why y'all not talking over here? You the only one paying all the bills because they left their card at home for the 15th time. Then they say, just drive me to the ATM. You go there, they say, it's not taking my card. I don't know why. Why don't y'all just be up front? I'm broke and I'm hungry. And if your friend loves you, they won't embarrass you. They'll feed you. They don't want no money back. You cannot bill. You ain't the only one that's ever been broke. Y'all trying to make me preach quick. Mm. What breaks up friendships? Toxic communication. That every time you call them, they got something negative to say. Y'all don't hear me. Why you don't have something good to say? You know, it bothers me that on all these blogs, they only expose what's bad. Why y'all don't brag about people's achievements, right? And that is, you see what I've done wrong, but you didn't see when I was wrong. Y'all, because I've done wrong don't mean I am what I've done. Some of us, y'all quiet, used to do sin very well. I'm one. See how folk won't lift their hands just looking around? If you're going to go to hell, don't go on discount, baby. I was one. And what's crazy is, I knew I was going if he came back. I don't believe in hell, Bishop. You can't be my friend. Look how quiet it got now. Because some of y'all got your own beliefs. That's why you live so loose, because you lost your faith. Faith says there's rules, there's regulations, there are limitations, there are things you can't do. Faith says, like grandma, things I used to do. Y'all don't help me. I don't do no more places I used to go. I don't go the way I used to talk. I don't talk no more. The way I used to walk, I don't walk no more. None of that says I'm perfect. It just says I'm striving to become a better me. If you believe God's creating a better you, shout yes. Shabbat, they got 25 minutes on this clock, so y'all better stay with me. Is it, it is important to remember this, Dr. Mixon. Friendships can also grow and change over time. Friends may not be as close as they once were, but they can still maintain the connection. Look at people. Why you don't call me like you used to? Why we don't rock out like we used to? There was a time that I wanted to rock with you all night. Now I want to rock with you for 30 minutes. Why? Because I traced my issue to a relationship that we had and because I engaged in a certain level of the conversation y'all miss it then made me look like something that I actually am not and yet y'all quiet I gotta take blame because I was there and because I did not deal with the cracks, the 
cracks became a wall. Second to the last level, I'm sorry, Pastor Joe, that I'm boring you. But now I'm about to give you some reasons why marriages separate. And I'm only going to name them. I won't give you any examples because y'all look a little tired and exhausted for examples. But when I say any of these, somebody be healthy enough to talk. One is a lack of communication. Reason being for a screamer, most people can't take honesty. They be like, keep it real, just tell me. They can't take that. Some of y'all ain't talking in here. And then you want to use against them what they kept real. You told me you could take it. Tell me how you really, really feel. It won't bother me. It is going to bother you. Especially if who's saying it loves you. Let me show you how timid some of us are. And I need more people talking. If three people around you right now looked at you and said you are ugly this morning. Strong people would be like, huh, hey, listen, I'm cool, that's you. We people, ugly. I don't even know you. Mind your bit. Now you're upset with that person for the rest of their life. Because they told you what they felt about you. But you claim you from the hood and you like folk to keep it real. Some of you are only as hoodish as who you fought. And you always fight what's weaker than you. Fight up. Stop beefing with who you know you could beat. Beef up. And I see a few people, I'm with that. Okay, tell me you are. I got some friends who I'll let come get you now. To this week so I can see if you can really beef up. We'll even Facebook it live. See, the mere fact that you think that you can win everything is the truth that no one should ever hang with you. Because you're the troublemaker, not the trouble solver. Another reason why people in marriage separate for screamers, constant arguing and conflict. I wish I had more people than that. Have you ever said, you know what, I'm tired of I'm tired of saying the same thing over and over again. Third reason, y'all ain't clapping, infidelity. Fourth reason, we're growing apart. Fifth reason, which is huge, financial problems. Sixth reason, you don't know how to be intimate, you just want sex. Seventh reason, unrealistic expectations. Eighth reason, you are substance abuser. Ninth reason, you're domestically violent. Y'all want me to keep going? Tenth reason that people never use is your family is in my business. You can't marry me, we have a problem, and your mama knock on my door. I promise you, you can't do that. You're going to have to pack up and go home with your mama. See, I make minds known so nobody can be confused about it. 
You will put your wife out? No, I'm sending her home with her mama. When people get in your personal business, they need to be invited. If you're not invited, you're interfering. See, y'all don't understand. And a man's mama should never, let me get out of this right here. Why your mama, boy? Two more reasons, then my last approach, then my preach. The person has mental health issues. Y'all not talking. They don't have a demon. They're one step away. Because where the mind is unstable, that's an open portal for a demon to enter. An idle mind, y'all don't hear me, is a devil's workshop. People with mental issues... Here goes an example. Then Curry just wave at me. Brother in the back just wave. It's people who literally come to church and when folk look in their direction, you think they looking at you. If they look at me one more time, you are not that fly. What are you talking about? Anybody looking at you? Your own household did not compliment you when you left this morning. If you don't get it at home, why you want it everywhere else? <sighs> Mental health issues. And let me say this, Dr. Richard is here. Other people that I know across the terra firma, Bishop Woodson, one of the most ingenious men that I know. Catch this. I believe and I mean what I'm saying for my church who will talk to me and not get offended, that 70% of all Holy Ghost filled people have a mental health issue. Because you got to hear from God, yourself, and the demon. You know, you got to ask yourself, is this me or is this God? You know, it's... it's, it's, it's. I'm going to prove it because you won't talk. Then when you say God told me to do it and it don't work, who was it? Because God never fails. So who were you hearing from? Never put God's name on a failed test. Now the right side ain't talking to me. The devil just keep playing ping pong with all y'all. Mental health issues is not mental disorders or disabilities. It just means that you've been around so many unhealthy conversations to where now your view of life leans towards the unhealthy perspective. You think that way because of who you speak to. Come on, I'm about to make a big statement. Give me three folk who don't care. You are what you eat, but you're also where you sleep. Now, I want to talk about that. Look at folks, I don't believe that. Go to college. Read some books. You can hang out with me Bishop Woodson, Bishop Pass, Mays, Frank, Bishop, healthy dynamic of men, and we can talk common sense to another man who's going through hell, right? Give him six perspectives of how to deal with this issue and give it to him from a place of professionalism and spiritual agility as well, right? And then this man go out and sleep with her. And then she starts talking to him. Yes. Now everything she's saying is suffocating all the six perspectives we gave. Because hers comes with an activity. Yes. Yes. See, I just lost everybody. 
she's talking while she's being active. And now what happens to a weak man in this situation for three women and men who will jump is he feels so good with her he don't want to hurt her. So he takes a side that he should have never taken because he didn't get an activity from the healthy six brothers. Well, at least I know he didn't get it from me. Y'all ain't talking. Every man for himself. Sexual incompatibility, mental issues, and then one external factor, a loss of a job. My last approach, then I got to braid the hair. And this is for ten folk who will encourage me as I'm trying to teach you. Why do people separate from church? Now, I talked about friendships. I've talked about marriages and family. But why do people separate from their ministries? Healthy perspectives now. And I need y'all to talk if it makes sense. Number one, they've sat with a group outside of their ministry and came back with different values. They found someone that agrees with their views. And because they finally feel right, they stay away from what tells them that they're wrong. If these pastors and preachers talk to me, your churches will grow like never before. Because churches around the world are closing a thousand a week. A week. And now prominent leaders are talking about, I resign. Another reason why they leave their church and on ministry for talkers is doubts and skepticism. You'd be surprised how many folk in a Pentecostal church with an apostolic background really don't believe in miracles. And when you testify, they already say he lying, she lying, that car ain't tipped over, they be dead. They don't understand the faith perspective is what makes me a child of God is God has done some magnificent things for me. He's done some things for me that only those who walk in that faith believe. I'm going to make a statement that's on my paper, but it's way down at the bottom. So I guess I won't hoop it, but I want to help you with it. And to the first 20 who start jumping, God's going to bless you. And that's this. Some of you have faithful friends that have no faith. So you're dedicated to a relationship that has no dedication to your God. And they're so strong in your life that they can pull you away from your church instead of you standing your ground. Oh, y'all are quiet now. They'll show you everything wrong with your church and nothing right. And they won't even remember they got delivered there. They got saved there. They got baptized there. They've got counseled there. They still owe us money. They still owe money. They I know the mother should have helped me, but there was an old song that says, I'm over here to stay, Lord, till I die. 
If all churches are closing at a thousand churches per whatever, how many churches you've got to choose from? So most folk who've been hurt by church folk, whatever, I'm almost there. This is their option for 10 folk who start jumping. I'm going to separate from church people. Then when they do that, the next option is I'm leaving the church. The next option is they hear from God outside of church. And now you're going to build your own ministry. That's not even biblical. No, no, don't get mad. Read the Bible. The one you say you want to preach. If you're going to preach it, the best thing to do first is to read it. Because the steps of a good man. The reason why you actually got hurt by church folk is because you're in the business of church folk. So God's trying to teach you before he puts a mic in your hand that there's a certain way that you have to approach those who mean you no good. You can't deliver it if you avoid it. If you are chosen for ministry, I want to get out of this. You must be in the business of getting hurt. I don't hear nobody talk. And if you don't face it, God won't fix it. But most of y'all avoid it. I just go leave my, my business. That's not church. Something wrong with that. Because how are you going to deliver people if you can't communicate with people? Let me prove my point because two folk taking it personal. You go ahead because the Lord talking to me about you. But this was never about you. The pitch is too big for one person. But let me say this for three folk who would scream. I stay away from people with demons. Jesus saw a man that had 2,000. He didn't cross the street or get back on the boat. They held the conversation. Oh, yeah. You even got to know how to talk to a devil. If you can't talk to each other. Oh, yeah, Jesus, the boy ran Dr. Curry. He only had three to 30 seconds, uh, what's in the preacher better, of sanity. He pulled away from the demons that were uh, 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 tormenting him long enough to say, Lord, save me. Those were the only words that he was able to say on his own. He broke free enough in his spirit. For him to say, Lord, save me. From that time, those three words for 10 folk who would scream, Jesus holds the conversation to save him with what's bothering him. He says, now, who are you? Y'all ain't talking. And the devil says, I am legion for we are met. And a lot of y'all missed it. Whoever did it to you didn't start with them. Everybody used them to get to you. So now if 10 folks said it, it got to be true. No, it takes more people for the lie to be believable. Your issue is... You get enough folk telling the same story, that story going to sound true. One of my big brothers, he's a biblical genius. He's an expositor and a pontificator, second to none, is Bishop James Woodson. Clap for him very quickly. We'll be back there. But now, I know him. He knows me. I know his wife. He knows my family. We've been intertwining. But if I went out here today and told somebody, you gay, uh -huh. what you say? I done told a lie. But if I get 50 more fools, right, to say... Pastor Woodson's gay, the way it's going to sound true is they're going to use my name who's close to you to make it believable. Todd said. It's not how many said it. It's whose name they attach.
Now, I know Tiffany, I know uh, Bishop James Woodson enough to know and hear me, 10 of you, that if it got out and he even thought I did it, his first thing is, I'm going to call him. He's not going to avoid me. He's going to call me. And because I know him and you don't, it will not be an easy call. The call's going to sound like this. Hey, where you at? This Woody, what's going on? You home? Negro, open the door. I'm coming. Because number one, it's too many confirmations. But none of those are bothering him. It's the name that they... So before we let the 49 liars come between both of us, we must hold the difficult conversation. And let me say this about us without telling our business for 10 folk who will scream. The conversation ain't going to sound holy. I, I, I promise you. Because once he say, I heard you said it, I'm going to be going off. Then he going to go off. I'm going to reach for something. He going to reach for something. And then we're going to need a third party called George Pass. Say, hey, listen, y'all, y'all been knowing each other 42 years. Y'all going to let this for, and then we're going to tell him, you get out my face too. Then we're going to fight. Then we're going to hug. Then we're going to go out and eat. Then we're going to kiss. Then we're going to call each other's family and say, me and Hall got into it. Sometimes you got to go through the whole fight. And not separate. Y'all ain't, so... Oh, y'all just missed what I said. Sometimes you got to let it all hang out to find out who to hang out with. I'm about to go to church now. I'm down to my last notes. No, I'm down to my last notes. Got a minute left there. I ain't going to make it. I just used a real example. Yes, Tell you guys, he and I share several best friends. We can't name them all because you'd be shocked. But one of our best friends have been to this church, Bishop Donnell Dixon. And there are times when he I, I see two or three of you looking at him real strange. Like, I've seen him somewhere. He, he's preached at the potter's house several times. That's Bishop Jake's best friend, but stay with me. Look at you. What? I didn't know. You don't, you don't know nothing. That's his best friend. But what is remarkable is we will tag team against him. And he bigger than both of us. And I tell Jimmy, you got to hold him down while I... We have verbally fought. We have biblically disagreed. We have done it all. Y'all ain't going to care. But by that night, we have rectified it. Because if you sleep with it, If you sleep with a thing or a person long enough, you'll start believing what it said. Even Bishop Woodson said it. Y'all should talk. He said, we can't sleep with it. His wife, when we had an argument, his wife would wake him up. Jimmy, call him. I ain't calling that nickel. That's how he said nickel. Jimmy, you ought to call him. He better call me. If he a prophet, he should be able to see. He better call. <laughs> Repeat after me, then I'm going to my last thing. Separation is not a divorce. 
Separation is a point in the relationship where you're considering, am I going to fight for it? Or am I going to leave? Y'all meant separation is for thinkers. Y'all quiet. People who leave don't think. Then after they think, it's already gone. But when you're a thinker, you're weighing both options. If the separation goes this way, if it goes that way, where does it place me? God tells Abram. You gonna be on fire today? Almost there. God tells Abram. You're uh, uh, Bishop Woodson. I said this. Bishop Pass. I said this for two folk who will catch it. I said to a group of people, there are certain things in the Bible that got a name after it was lived. There's no faith. The word faith in Genesis, there's just a description. Abraham practiced what there was no word for. Come on, talk to me. He said, we walk by faith, not by sight. And he went not knowing where he was going. And all of you that won't jump up on this shame on you, that's going through a season and that season is like, I don't know how I got here or how I'm going to or what I'm going to do. That's faith challenging you right now. Faith is saying, don't look at what's pretty and say yes, because sometimes the yes is in the ugly. See, Lot saw the well watered land. I'm almost there. Some of you failed yourself because you went by what it looked like. What it feel like? He was right, but I don't like the way he said it. Who grew up? The way you grown. Some you didn't have to yell. Was it the truth? You gotta work through your emotions. I'm not going through what I'm going through in life to feel better emotionally. I'm digging through life for the answer. If it hurts me, as long as it helps me, I'll think about it later. Right now, you got to see the bigger picture. Two minutes now. Two minutes for real. Did not God tell Abram, leave thy country, thy kindred, and thy kind, and go where I shall tell you? But for those who would talk, Abram was still nice enough to take a lot. You don't need a lot in, in the beginning of your journey. You need as little as possible. You... You don't need a lot of friends. You don't need a lot of funds. All you need is a lot of faith. Y'all ain't. Let me talk to this side because y'all look so good now. If you take the past with you, you never went anywhere. If I go to my next level and all of you still there, then we should have stayed right where we were. Maybe I should say it like this because you have not said you're preaching better. You've done well today. Maybe y'all missed it. Jesus said to Peter and them, go to the other side and I'll meet you. Then the Bible said, as they went, he sent the multitudes away. He basically said, if your next side looks like the side you're on now, you should have stayed where you were. 
And some of y'all, God is trying to get you to the next level and you trying to take what he refuses to bless with you, right? Because I don't want folk to hurt me. I know what it is to be turned against. You don't know what it is to see God walk away. Now you got some choices. You either let somebody go who thinks you did it wrong and get to where God wants you to be. And if they rejoice, they'll see you maybe in the future. But right now, if you're the one holding me back, there is no decision for me to make I've got to press on without you so God says to Abraham because there's tension between your herd men and your uncle separate now I'm gonna say this for screamers he never left them he separated he was still helping Lot from afar got him out of jail and everything I can help you without being with you. Now hear me. Let me hear B. Hear me and hear me well. I'm not there yet, but I'm climbing. The Bible says that God started talking with Abram again after he separated from Lot. I'm going to flip this in a healthy manner. Ten of you jump after you hear it. God is not asking you to leave that person. He's telling you, I need you to leave because you can't hear me. Sometimes relationships are distractions. See, 10 of you should have ran, spoken to him. So he hurt you through a thing you love, but at least you and God talking like you should again. God said, I don't care about your heart. I don't care about your feelings. I care about you and I right now. I need you to learn the difference in their opinions and my word. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me. Guide me. Every day, send your anointing. Father, I pray, order my steps in your word. Look at Mahashia to my heart. Look at somebody that's close to you and say, neighbor, can I lean on you just for a little while? Because tell them by the end of this week, I've got to be in my next level. Tell them I thought I'd be there before now. But I got distracted along the way. I gave my attention to things I shouldn't gave it to. But tell that neighbor, but I'm pressing on. If that person ain't talk to you right, slide and get some out. And tell them I'm pressing on. The upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. No higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet. You better preach to somebody and say, neighbor, all you need to get back on track is for God to plant your feet. Encourage that neighbor. Look them eyeball to eyeball and say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been through, but I guarantee you that you and I have been through hell, but I want to testify and tell you this. Uh, Y'all ain't talking to each other. Talked about mistreated. I've been buked and I've been scorned. I've been talked about sure as you're born. I've been up. Y'all ain't preaching back off, man. And I've been down. I've been leveled. To the ground. But 100 of you with a good praise. But say as long as I've got Jesus. Hey, Lord. As long as I've got Jesus. Who y'all 
y'all preaching to I feel another preach in me find another neighbor and separate from the first one don't leave them just give them a separation and tell them you ain't communicating right so I gotta find me another person I hate that I have to leave you but I'll be right back find somebody else and say neighbor well neighbor you and I are coming out of this by tomorrow morning because how can two walk together except they be agreed tell their neighbor I agree that your bills are being paid I agree that your body's being healed I agree that your children are being saved I agree that your credit is going up I agree that your pressure's coming down I agree that you're not just an entrepreneur but you're an entrepreneur tell them whatever's in my spirit I'm about to do it and the devil is a liar as long as I serve a God that sits high and he looks down low y'all find somebody let's have a little more church shake them like a soft shaker and say neighbor did you hear my pastor faith will separate us but the same faith will bring us back together and when we come back together let's share our stories how much hell did you have to go through to become successful after you finish your story let me tell you mine some through the water some through the flood some through great trial but all through the blood shake a neighbor and tell your neighbor i'm coming out of this and when
social media. And if your neighbor don't get happy, I'm going to tell you, separate from them for seven days. Don't call them. Don't text them. Don't communicate with them. But look at them and say, neighbor, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to watch your behavior. Tell them your past has a smell, but your future has a fragrance. Tell them your past has an odor, but your future has an aroma. Which way are you headed? Are you going back? I'm sorry, we're closing. I'm sorry. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Takuchi Atabaha. The devil's upset right now. But let me tell 20 of you that have been hurt. You may have done something, but nothing that awarded you to go through the pain you went through. But God has given me a direct word. He said, To them that praise me for two minutes. By Tuesday morning, I'll bring them out of what they're in. And don't ever look back after Tuesday. You got two minutes to praise them right now and not wait on nobody. favor all of you that are just church folk and you ain't been through nothing and you gonna just sleep with it and let it continue be seated but the rest of you whether you feel good bad or indifferent that really needs God to step in 
and pull you out of that thing and pull that thing out of you. I mean it today. You've got 30 seconds to give God the most. Vibrant. Passionate. Praise. Let's go. For all of you that want to see God bring peace in the midst of the storm, I'm going to ask you to find someone that will dance with you or leap with you or clap for you. And in 40 seconds of us dancing for other people, by Tuesday, watch, God's going to flip some things and God's going to fix some things and God's going to fix some things. You got 40 seconds. One, two, one, two, three, go!
prophecy or word of knowledge anyone this is what the Lord told me that is working on the business plan has a business plan already functioning and you need God to turn those six figures into seven he said when you praise them don't look to the left or the right God says while your feet are dancing God says I'm preparing the plan to succeed you've got 30 seconds one two
stops do you have another sound is there a sound in this place hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hold hands with your brother, your sister. Hold hands with your brother, your sister. F sharp. D flat. Mm. That's when worship is personal. Worship is not silent. Silence is the devil trying to choke you. But with the fruit of your lips. Hi, 
Bahia. Aia! Tell me who can stand be for us when we call on that great name. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Jesus, precious Jesus, we have a victory. Oh, tell me who can stand going home for us when we call on come on you do I told Satan what you tell him why one more round peace is mine peace is mine Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Peace today. Claim it, claim it. I told Satan. Thank you, Jesus. One time, church, go with me. Yes, go with me. Yes, yes. I feel the joy there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. He's been so good. 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 If the mother's in all y'all help me with this, I'll be good, we can go home. Down in my soul. Down in my soul. Down in my soul. Down in my soul.
Whatever you need, God's got it. No music. I give you two minutes to finish expressing yourselves. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. This is that moment of refreshing. Bow your heads and close your eyes. What a day of rejoicing there will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that would be when we all We will sing a Mahashaya and a Deoshama and shout victory. That ain't a funeral song, that's a resurrection song. Heads bowed. Major deliverances have transpired today. The faith that separates will also be the faith that brings us all back together with testimonies, with unbelievable stories. How I got over, my soul looks back and wonders how I got over. How I got old How I got old You know my soul looks How I got old ah, How I got old One time as a church.
You know. You know. How I got His bowed eyes closed. Need 20 people to go with me on first Sundays is when I challenge people to give. 